Thank you so much for watching this video. If this has blessed you in any way, remember there are three ways that you can give. While you're at it, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss anything that Legacy Community Church has to offer. Hey, we love you so much. Have a blessed rest of your day.
Hallelujah. Sometimes electronics work, sometimes they don't. <laughs>
we got one more song, don't we? All right. I'm just enjoying myself, not even thinking about it. We have one more song.
been in a class discussing the Psalms this semester, and it's, I never realized how beautiful the Psalms are. The whole meaning behind the Psalms is a book of praise. It's a book of worship. And each particular Psalm is very interesting and unique. Because what it is, is it's a, it's a cry of human emotions out to a God that is tangible, a God that is real. Sometimes I feel like in our life we feel that God is so far from us and so distant from us, but we can find strength and encouragement in just this deep affection to God that we can find in the Psalms. So this is a Psalm of David, and it's Psalm 27. It said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers rise against me to eat my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, they are the ones who will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire to him in the temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of my trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make songs of melody to the Lord. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God, my salvation. For my mother and my father have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the, one, the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me. And this is my favorite part of this whole song. I believe that the, I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, I will wait for the Lord. I will be strong and take heart and take courage because I will wait for the Lord. This morning we witnessed and we heard a testimony of a miracle that took place. This morning we were reminded that God is a sovereign God that loves you, that cares about you, and you are not too far away from the love of God. When you showed up this morning, it might you, maybe you were coming in and you had something that was pressed against your heart saying, God, I need a touch of healing. I need a touch of salvation. I need something to happen in my life. Or maybe we walked in just going through the motions because this is something we do on our Sunday morning. But I just want to tell you, wherever you are in that spectrum, God is here and God loves you and God wants to have a relationship with you that goes further beyond any expectation that we could ever imagine. God is after you and chasing you in a way that we can never fathom because there is a love that is so deep that pierces any type of sin, that pierces any type of wrongdoing, that pierces any type of rejection we have. So this morning I want to ask you, and I just want to remind you, whatever you came in here with, let us not forget that God is a God of miracles, that God is a God of healing. That God is a God of love. And he loves you. And he cares about you. Father, this morning, we are so thankful for you. We are so thankful that we get to come in this place as a community, as one church, as one body, and worship you. We get to bring glory and honor to you. Father, I just ask that you just, and I just pray that our songs and our voices and our shouting were, their sweetness to your ears. 
that it was a joyful noise, that you were proud to, to love us. Because, Father, we are proud to be loved by you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. In the power of the Spirit.
you a little bit of history leading up to this chapter 53 the book of Isaiah there were prophecies given to the children of Israel doom and gloom and destruction and judgment so so you got to understand going into 53 uh, whose report are you going to believe King James says then in chapter 52 there's this total shift uh, to restoration, rebuild, and I'm going to bless you. So now you get this bad report, then you get a good report. Then chapter 53 begins with, whose report will you believe? You want the bad news first or the good news first? What do you usually want? <laughs> he wants the good news first. The good news I always got, when I get you to the house, I'm going to wear you out. So I knew that the good news was, well, that was bad news, but the good news was she was going to wait until she got home. <laughs> Mama usually gave me the whippings. My problem was in church was, you won't believe it. And I thought sometimes that you were supposed to answer the preacher because he asked you a question. And I thought you were supposed to. So that's why I ask you sometimes, go ahead, answer. I, want, I don't want you to go home to the whip because you answered the preacher back. Now, me, I'm just the opposite. Go ahead and tell me what's bad first. Hopefully the good's go out of the bad. Oh, I hope so. If it ain't good enough, just... Just lump it in with the bad. Bad report, good report. Now, you have to make a decision on whose report will you believe. God's word will always give you another report. Now, now I wanted to say it like this. That you can always get a second opinion from God. But I think he ought to be the first opinion. But sometimes we try to work things out our own self, do things ourselves. So God is always the second opinion. God, do you think that's a good idea? I think it's really great. Would you help me do this the way I wanted to do? Now, you see, God's word's always going to give you another report. Will you believe, when you hear God's word, over everything that's going on right now within our world? Forget our world. What about our nation? Forget about our nation. What about our own state? I wish sometimes that when the politicians get up there, they'd be truthful and give us good news and then tell us the bad news. Or tell us the bad news and give us... I haven't heard any good news from them. I, I got so tired of listening to the news and I'm newsed out. Because I'm trying to figure out, okay, God, what are you doing? What can I tell everybody else? Because I know they're listening to the same news, and they've got to feel as rotten as I feel. So yesterday, I was kind of in a hurry. I went to Walmart. Everybody in town was at Walmart. But that's okay. <laughs> you know, I stood in line, but I went to the garden side, and there was only about 25 people, 30 people standing. I was good with that. Pharmacy was closed, trying to get Debbie's medicine. It was closed. I guess they were out to lunch. And I got through, and then I went, and I got right up there. There was only one person in front of me. got right up there, and I said, it's Debbie, and, and I need to pick up her medicine. And the lady says to me, you need to go over there because the pharmacy wants to speak to you. I stood there for 15 minutes. Cause I didn't have the medication because... It was hanging on the wall, and I couldn't reach it. He calls a pharmacy, wanted to talk to me about Debbie's medicine. And you know what the question he asked me? Do you have any questions about this medication? <laughs> I got to the car, and I told, I told my friends that I could have strangled the pharmacist. And then, I don't know who would have done our medicine. <laughs> well, anyway. I thought he was going to tell me something. And all he asked me, after 15 minutes standing there, do you have any questions for me about this medication? 
I'm not opening up the floor. Do you have any questions about the sermon today? We'll talk about that later. But the Bible says, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap the flesh. And if you sow in the Spirit, you will reap from the Spirit the positive aspects, promises of, of peace and joy. But it's up to you. Whose report will you believe? Now, I've thought about that all week long. I've pondered over that. Who are you going to believe? And I've come to tell you today there's only two reports. Two reports. There's the sinner's report. Sinners are reporting everything's going down the tubes. Everything's bad. Nothing's going, nothing's working, everything's happening. I'm telling you what, you better you better buy some of that stuff off of TV and buy them five-gallon bucket pails because things are getting bad. If you watch the, some of the, the television shows, they're selling you survival kits. Uh, you better get them because things are getting bad, things are going to happen, and, and Democrats have taken over, and so now we're a socialist government, so we'll all be wearing the same colored shoes, same pants, the same shirt. And not only that, church ain't going to make it. It's going under because people won't come because they're watching at home in their pajamas. You, and let me tell you something. We're as good as Walmart. Wear your pajamas here or there. If, if that's kind of thing, you make sure they're wearable. Negative thinking will bog you down. And, and, and then all you'll want to do is three things. Nurse it, rehearse it, then disperse it. You know what I've seen on news that day? I'm telling you what, it's getting bad. All of our stuff, you know, we got, they're going to take away our Social Security, Medicare, all that stuff. They're going to fund it to, to fund something else and all this and all that. And i got to ask you, what you been listening to? And I only know this, CBS, NBC, and ABC, and all the others. If you sow to the wind, you'll reap a whirlwind. Because it will come back, it will bite you, and you need to get another report. Second report, there's the saints' report. What are the saints' report? Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Bad, good. Which one are you going to look at? Oh, oh it's going to be bad this week. Oh, it's going to be bad this week. It's going to be bad this week. Which one are you going to believe? You will have problems. Are you going to believe the, the bad side? I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, the second side was good report. I will deliver you out of them all. How many of them? All of them. In this world, you will have tribulation. Let me just say, hard times. But be of good cheer, for I am with you, and I have overcome the world and, and, and the things in the world. Whose report are you going to believe? Jesus said in Matthew 24, he, he, he warns us in the last days there will be wars, rumors of wars, there will be earthquakes, pestilence. What is that? Bad times. But it also says, and this gospel shall be preached. To the whole world, revival. So what are you gonna what are you gonna listen to? Both of these are in the same chapter. Are you gonna grab the bad hole? Things are gonna get worse, storms are gonna get worse, hurricanes are gonna be worse than we've ever had. Oh, it's probably gonna tear my roof off the house. What am I gonna do? Oh, things are bad. You can grab the bad or the good. He said, in the midst of all of that stuff, there's gonna be a revival. These are not bad times. These were revival times. God's getting ready to do something incredible, powerful. Uh, Tanda was just a tip of the iceberg. God is getting ready to do miracles like we've never seen before. I think it's going to surpass what happened in the book of Acts. And these are revival times. So I'm trying to get you to think positive. Don't think the way NBC, ABC, CBS, NBN, NBN, all them, all them C's, you know. The Bible said in the last days there will be a famine of hearing the word of God. This is not a famine and we don't have to be a part of it. So yes, 
People may not want to hear the word of God. It might be because preachers ain't preaching it. But I tell you, I'm not going to be a part of it no matter what comes down the line. I'm still going to preach. And I don't have nobody to preach to with them either. I've already, I've already done, I've already done calculated, and I've already done. I'm thinking, okay, so what if the people that are in office shut us down, and then I say no, and I preach, and what if I go to jail? At least I'll have a captive audience 25, 24 hours a day that I get to talk to. He dwells in us. And he will not leave us because we get in tough times. See, I still believe the report of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run to it and they are safe. I remember we used to sing that song. Bad times are coming. Yes, I know all of that. But I've got a better report. Revival's coming. Jesus said so. Whose report are you going to believe? Jesus said it in the last days that the harvest would be great, but the laborers would be few. And I, I, so I've been talking to you. Why? Because the devil is taking the, every opportunity during this time of confusion that we're living in to wear us down before the harvest. And I believe he's trying to tell us it's never going to happen. I've come to tell you today, I do not believe that report. I believe we're going to see a mighty move of God like we've never seen before. And we're going to see a revival. And if you don't get in, you're going to get left out. We're, I, I know we're not living in normal times. And I don't know that we'll ever go back to normal times. And you and I can be plugged into a bad report or a good report. Because they both are there. Paul told Timothy. Chapter 1, 1 Timothy, verses 18 and 19. Paul said this, Timothy, my son. I'm giving you the instructions in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the good fight, having faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and have shipwrecked their faith. Timothy came from a dysfunctional family. Now, his mother was a Christian. His grandmother was a Christian. His dad, he was absent from his life. For the most part. Now, Paul is telling Timothy, don't believe the bad reports. These have been prophecies, and, or there have been prophecies and promises spoken over your lives. And, and, and you don't know, and you know it was spoken over you about your family, your children, your business, future health. Uh, what you have to do is you've got to fight the good fight. With what God has told you. So i got to ask you today. Which report are you going to believe? What God has said to you through his word. Through a prophet or through promises. Are you going to believe the bad news? Uh, or the good report? Don't give up. Don't quit. Joseph lost two cups. But he didn't give up. Whose report are you going to believe? You will either believe the book. The book is God. And his word, or you're going to end up shipwrecked. I stand on these every day in these hard times that we, we started with, with the COVID and back in March. Jesus said, I built my church. And I don't know where you, we, we can all come up. There's so many, uh, you know, they've already said two or three different things that the virus came from. But let me tell you something. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail again. Now, he didn't say it wasn't going to hit us. He didn't say it was going to come, that it wasn't going to come against us. He just said it's not going to prevail. I'm going to win. Amen. I'm going to win. When God gives you a promise, I learned this a long time ago, you have to protect that promise. Because there's an enemy that that while you were sleeping during the night, he's planning schemes against you for that day. And he sent out his demons to go and, and bring those things that they planned against you. Paul tells us in Timothy three things. That's what he was saying to, to Timothy. 
You got to believe the promises. This develops faith, which gives you strength to fight. You want your faith? Believe the promises of God. Don't doubt them. Believing in the word of God, the promises, the prophecies, all the stuff that's over you, believe it will, will cause your faith to grow. Your faith will cause you to fight. I've been so angry at the, the devil. I said, I wish that you would just appear so I could see you. Because you and I could fight. I had a vision a few years ago. The Lord's, uh, not the Lord, but I met him face to face. And here's what he said to me. If you'll leave me alone, I'll refuse. He said, uh, the bullets you have in your gun are not strong enough to do what you want to do against me. He made a dumb mistake. He told me my gun wasn't big enough. So you know what I had to do? I had to start stepping up my praise. Not my prayer, my praise. The Lord told me that when I was in the depressed state that I had to sing my way out. So I've got to step up my praise. That's my bullets. That's my weapons. We're being told, believe the report of the Lord so you can fight with the promises. So I tell you, I just get up every day and say, God, I'm healed. I just get up every day and say, oh, Lord, no, that, that I'm going to prosper and I'm going to be wealthy. Believing brings forth faith. And faith brings forth a fighter. Have you quit fighting? If you have, it's because you quit believing. Today is the day for, uh, as Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gifts. Today is the day for you, right now in this place, to stir up the promise, the prophecies of God's word. But it's sticking to the bottom and, and, and you've fallen down and you can't get up. See, you start stirring these prophecies and promises of God. I love this story and I'm going to be through. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 7, the prophet has declared there'd be a famine. The prophet even told the king that that it, it's going to be this much, it's going to be this much, it's going to be this much, and it's going to be this much. And the, the advisor to the king said, ha, even if God was to put windows in heaven, this isn't going to happen. Well, it happened. They were inside the gates, inside the city, starving. Four lepers are outside the gate. They're dying starvation, but they're dying also of leprosy. One evening, one afternoon, they could begin to smell the food from the enemy's camp down the road. One of them turned to the other three and said, why do we just sit here till we die? There's nothing inside. They're not going to give us anything to eat because there's nothing for them to eat. So why do we just sit here till we die? If we get up, and move toward that smell. We're probably going to die also. But at least we'll be moving in the direction of a miracle. And I love what happens. The one leper said, let's go. The other three followed. And the Bible said that when they started walking, the enemy was outside because they, they, they were just waiting until they could take the seat. Enemies down there cooking. And all of a sudden, God got in the midst of four lepers. And those men that were in this camp, the enemy began to hear the noise and the sound of an army approaching. <laughs> four lepers. They hear an army. They, they don't, they just run. 
They leave everything. The food is cooking. They take off running. They left everything behind. I can see these four lepers as they come in. Where is everybody? And they see gold, clothing, there's wine, and they eat. And the one said, this isn't right. Look at all the food. We need to go back to the city and give them the report. They made their way back to, I don't know how long it would take them as lepers, but they made their way back to the, to the, to the city. Now, the king's advisor is sitting at the front gate because he's the one guarding the gate. And, and they say, we found food. Look what we've got. We've got. And, but he's the advisor. And he said, ha, there ain't enough food down there and, and all these hungry people. And, and we, how do we know that, that the Armenians have already uh, sent you back here to get us to come out? And, and, and so... So he says no. But but the people that were inside believed the report of these four lepers. And, and let me tell you something. It had already been prophesied to him because he didn't believe the report of the Lord. He had died. And the people in the, in the inside the gate, they trampled over the king's advisor. And he died there according to 1 Kings chapter 7. In these uncertain times, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe everything you hear over the news? Or will you believe the word of the Lord? For me, what I've been trying to do for you, if you've been listening to me, I've been trying to encourage you that there's some good things going to come out of everything that's happening. I've been trying to encourage you that don't give in to the negative report because you're going to fall by the wayside and, and, and your life is going to be miserable and, and, and all of this stuff. Let me tell you something. I used to wish that I could have been born in the 50s, 40s or 50s. I would have loved to play in the big bands because I love that kind of music and I played in bands and I would have loved I'd have been born in the 30s, I'd have been a gangster. <laughs> I'm mean and tough. And so I'd have probably been a gangster with the mom. But God knew exactly when for me to be born. And I'm telling you what, I'm so glad that I'm an old man in the time that I'm living. Because I'm living in one of the greatest days that it's ever been. Oh, it looks bad, but I tell you what. I heard my grand, my nanny talk about praying. People prayed for their chickens because they had the blind stupor. That sounds for us stupid. I mean, praying for chickens because these chickens laid eggs, and this is what people lived off of, and it was their that was their support. And I remember Nanny said people in the church would say, you got to pray for my cow and give them milk. you got to pray and all this kind of stuff. And then you'd hear praise reports. My, my chickens get more eggs this past week and than any, and my neighbor didn't get any at all because they didn't come to church and they didn't believe God. And all of this stuff and all this stuff. And, and, and I've I, I watched Nanny talk about the healings and the miracles that took place. My mom drove me to every tent revival when I was a baby and a child growing up. And I saw things happen and some incredible things. I was standing on stage in the South Georgia uh, camp meeting and, 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 and the morning service of T.L. Lowry's preaching and I got to play and sing that day and, and so they called me back up and making me play while he was doing his altar call stuff and there was and a man come walking across the stage and T.L. Lowry throwed his hand up there and hit him on the forehead the man hit the ground and when he hit the ground his teeth popped out I'll never forget this I'm thinking oh God that's dead. <laughs> and they have me play funeral music in a minute. Next thing he jumped up, no teeth said, I'm healed. <laughs> and danced and jumped. I remember going to Brownsville. I saw things that I saw I saw there that I saw as a teenage boy. 
I was singing in the choir when I was a teenage boy. I was about 13. Debbie, I can show you that video. I was 13, 14, somewhere in that age group. I was singing in the choir. And uh, Don Clemens was singing. And he was probably six or six one. Benches were, we had benches, and they were bolted to the floor this time. And I watched Don Clemens start to shake, quiver, got the palsy, whatever. I don't know what he had, but he had it. And the next thing I know, he was laying flat on the floor under both benches. I do not know, because I watched him. I still don't know how he slid through there and back. Four and back, because he was laying under the bench that he was sitting in, under the bench, and his head was over here. I never heard a thud. Now, I'm not wishing we could go back to old time days. I'm telling you, I'm believing the report of the Lord. We're going to see things we've never seen before in our eyes. People are going to come to the church that have not been to church. They're not atheists. They just don't know. That's the family part. And guess what? We're going to get to tell them about God. And let me tell you, I don't think some services we're going to get through the singing service because people are going to run because the Holy Ghost is going to draw them and we're going to pray for them and we're going to see amazing things take place. But every, every Sunday morning I hear the same word. By rubbing them off. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. At least one, somebody pat me on the back. You're really doing a good job. Every Sunday morning, you, you just don't understand. I hear the enemy. Yep. There won't be nobody there today. You ran off last week because if you'd leave me alone, I'd leave you alone. And if you left me alone, your church would grow. And I, I, there's the only thing I can say to you. You lie. You lie. The anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. It's the anointing that makes the difference. People are going to come here. And people are going to get saved here. And we're going to have to rearrange some things and change some things. But I'm, I'm here to tell you today, don't worry about the future part. I'm just worried about am I going to make it through tomorrow? Who's rooting for me?